Let's start with a CPU air cooler to get a sort of baseline because they're familiar to us. So the first thing you do when you're going to install a cooler is to put thermal paste on the CPU heat spreader. This is because the surfaces of the heat spreader and the base of the cooler aren't perfectly smooth, so you get tiny pockets of air between them. This is not good because air doesn't conduct heat very well, so those air pockets make it difficult for heat to pass from the CPU to the cooler. The thermal paste fixes this problem by filling those spaces and allowing the heat to conduct through the paste itself to the cooler and not be held back by the air. All of the coolers that we're going to be talking about today are designed to spread the heat out over as large of an area as possible so that as air flows through, it can more easily be absorbed and carried away. As I said, air doesn't conduct heat very well, but when the cooler is able to spread that heat out and in doing so expose it to more air, the air is able to absorb a small amount of heat at many different points, which makes up for the air's poor conductivity. So right here is where the stack of metal fins comes into play. The heat travels up through the heat pipes and disperses throughout the fins. There's usually a fan mounted on the cooler which forces more air over the fins so that it can absorb more heat. There's a point of diminishing returns though, so at a certain point fan speed isn't going to change how much heat your cooler can dissipate. Don't, don't worry too much about the fan you're using. As I move on to the other types of coolers, remember what I said about what the cooler is doing. It's spreading the heat out so that the air can absorb it. In a water cooler, the heat is absorbed into the water. The water travels through the tubes into the radiator. When it gets into the radiator, it flows through heat pipes that are just like the heat pipes in the air cooler. And from the heat pipes, it spreads out through the fin array on the radiator itself. At that point, the fans blow air through, the air absorbs the heat from the radiator, and it flows out and carries the heat away. Now for GPU coolers, the two main types are both air coolers. The heatsink for both of them is just a compressed version of the CPU air cooler. It's the, exactly the same parts, the thin array, the heatsink and everything, just a different shape. And it's doing the exact same thing. The only significant difference between the two is how the fans direct the air. Axial coolers have fans blowing directly onto the fins and the warm air is expelled in every direction. Lower style coolers suck air into the housing, pass it through the fin array, and send it outside the case. The axial cooler is able to maintain the same low temps as the blower cooler, but with lower fan speeds, which can make it quieter or allow for more thermal headroom when overclocking. The blower cooler is usually used in smaller cases because it can blow air directly out of the case. This is a good thing because in smaller cases, it's hard to have an airflow path directing cool air in and warm air out, which means the heat generated by your GPU could potentially get trapped and warm up other components in your system. The blower style cooler prevents this problem, but if you're going to overclock, blower coolers tend to get pretty loud, so you'll have to decide for yourself what's worth it. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, do that stuff. Uh, if you don't want to, then, you know, go ahead, don't do it. It's a free country. Unless you're not in the U.S. Or if you are in the U.S., who knows? Politics, man. Let's not talk about politics.